Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 14 days for today's fur video. Day 10 will take us to the 24th of March and we'll be able to set up beyond that with the extended GFS. It's them ensembles of May runs around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for April and I should get on back for you in a moment. Just to say that first, the video says our 6 a UK World Forecast and we'll also release Jamie Friday. Check out those two bits if you'd like to do that. Like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content and thank you so much everyone for doing that for gals weather bits thank you so much everyone uh, i'm gonna say hello and happy birthday to finley boy finley boyo one of our younger uh, viewers at gals weather bits it's uh, finley's 15th birthday today so hello happy birthday finley hope you're having a lovely day my friend and enjoying hang out with hashtag team finley on your uh, birthday. And uh, have a great day, my friend. 15. Blimey. I can remember when I was 15. I was 15 in... Um, I was 15 in 1993, I think. Um, or was it 92? Anyway, so... <laughs> it was a very, 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 very long time ago. Gas getting very old. Anyway, happy birthday, Finley. Well done, my friend. Hope you're having a lovely day. Enjoy your birthday. Uh, just to say, but if you enjoy the content on the channel at the moment, you can afford to do so. Please can you consider giving a donation to uh, Gas Worthies via our PayPal uh, page. This is the Gas Worthies pay PayPal page uh, just here. So we need to sign into PayPal account. Come to this page, obviously, sign to your paper account, and then uh, donate whatever you'd like to get us worth it, and uh, that will help us to pay for the channel and uh, help to pay for me to do this for everyone and do um, all of this content. So thank you so, so much, everyone. We're primarily ads funded, and of course, have a lovely channel members as well. Hello to the channel members. Um, thank you so much for your, uh, you know, your support, uh, channel members. Absolutely incredible. Um, but every little help. So, uh, if you could afford to give a donation through our PayPal page, that'd be awesome. And we'll give you a shout out in uh, in in in, uh, in the video, of course, if you want one. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, let's start off with the latest win for that from Earth No School dot net. So, a wins are still in. Still, still in, I should say, uh, from a north northeast direction. However, you'll see that we are beginning to backwind around to the west, to the north of the UK and Ireland. So we're starting to cut off uh, that northerly. This is as high pressure begins to uh, slip southwards. And over the weekend, we're going to find that high pressure settling in over top of the UK and Ireland, bringing a lot of dry weather with it and temperatures will gradually start to uh, stage a bit of a recovery through the uh, weekend but particularly into next week we'll see the temperature getting back close to average and there will still be some pretty cold nights to be honest Central temperature is currently sitting at 7.3, that's 1.6 degrees above the 61 to 99 average. It's provisional to uh, yesterday to the 13th of March. <clears throat> Excuse me, these are the GFS of bread temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. On Kingston upon hold today, another suggested location for this part of the video. If you'd like to have your local town city feature within this part of the video, then uh, please let us know in the comments, so we're always more than happy to do that. So we start off the, we start off colder than average, of course, at the moment. We will see the upper air temperature starting to stage a bit of a recovery. <coughs> Excuse me, get it, won't. I'm beginning to lift up uh, through the course of next week. So we're back into uh, spring like conditions after this week's wintering interruption uh, next week. And we're going to find uh, the upper air temperatures close to average as we come towards months. Um, precipitation wise, really a two way split, starting off with a lot of dry weather over the first week, over the next week, and then becoming a good deal more unsettled into the second week through the last week of March. You see the precipitation spikes returning then. Temperature normally is six to five days, coming out to colder than average, especially so for England and Wales. In the six to ten day time frame, the temperature normally both goes above average, and in the ten to fourteen day time frame, temperature normally is just a little bit uh, above average then. And the uh, seven-day precipitation anomaly is uh, drier than normal for the UK and for Ireland as well. In the four to ten-day time frame, drier than average for the north, near normal 
further south. And then in the uh, 8 to 14 day time frame, actually you know, it's a bit wetter than average down in the south and near normal elsewhere. Driest weather is for western parts of Scotland. Right, let's start going through chart data. Then Miss Abelaitis UK Met Euron is looking for uh, midnight on Monday. High pressure dominating over country and winds coming in from an easy direction. For into Tuesday and Wednesday, high pressure gradually starts to slip away to the east as the layer pressure begins to develop to the west and to the southwest. But not really turning unsettled, to be honest. We keep uh, a lot of dry weather again throughout uh, next week with an extension from the high pressure but slips away through. So the high pressure actually is centred by Friday over Ukraine, but the ridge is kind of extended all the way into the west of Europe. If that was a summer pattern, that would be very hard. Notice that the isobars are coming up from North Africa, so, you know, that would be the kind of thing that would get the temperature well into the 30 Celsius if it was high summer. Of course, below around Biscay will threaten thunderstorms and instability as well, but uh, that would be a bit of a classic about summer. It's not summer, it's only, it's only March, so um, it's going to be turning milder though uh, through next week. Temperature's probably getting back to the mid-teens Celsius and a lot of dry weather I think with that one well, ICON looks like this. High pressure, again, is in control and in the ascendancy through to the middle of next weekend. It gradually starts to slip away towards the eastern side of Europe by Friday as lower pressure starts to develop out to the west. So by Friday, well, we're drawing up a mild southerly wind um, and low pressures begin to advance in from the Atlantic. So a hint of something a rather more unsettled there uh, by the end of next week, especially so for the west. The KMA again starts us off under high pressure, slips the high pressure over to the eastern side of Europe and lower pressure around the Bay of Biscay starts to edge its way in. Uh, then we start getting a bit of northern blocking going as we uh, go up towards day 10. So we've got high pressure building through the Atlantic up towards Greenland, low pressure pushing east. So that's starting to bring colder air back in uh, from the northeast again uh, with the KMA. We end up looking like that. So, turning unsettled gradually uh, with the KMA. It's not a quick process. It's a slow process. And uh, by the end of the KMA run, gets the 26th of March, we're looking uh, rather showery and a little bit on the cool side there. <clears throat> so sorry once more, everyone. Could we have an outbreak there, YouTube? <laughs> Right, OK, well, uh, GFS Midnight Run looks like that again. High pressure dominating. We have a bring the wind in from uh, the east and then from the south. We should be only part of next week. So gradually uh, turning milder as we go through next week. That's how it looks as we get to the end of uh, next week. So the high pressure's over on the east side of Europe. We've got low pressure in the Atlantic. And we bring the wind up from the south. The wind's coming up from a long way south. The ice bars go all the way back to Spain and North Africa. So that's got to lift the temperature up to mid-teens Celsius at least. But... But low pressure starts coming in from off the Atlantic. So around days 8, 9, 10, so it's a lot more unsettled uh, with the GFS uh, midnight run and uh, low pressure bringing quite a bit of wet and windy weather in actually through the last week of March. But that's how we end up with GFS midnight run. Oh, uh, still unsettled. Actually under a transient ridge there on the 30th of March. Too far out for that kind of detail, but the next low is downstream waiting in the wings. And then the GFS 6 Z uh, showing again the wing backing into the south through the course of next week. We come out of these uh, chilly conditions and uh, lift the temperature back up. Spring resumes. Around days 8, 9, 10, low pressure then starts coming in from off the Atlantic with a 6 Z as well, looking much more unsettled then. Bit different with a six head as the low pressure pushes eastwards. We start to bring down some cooler air from uh, the northwest around that low, and heights are gradually beginning to rise up towards green as well. So uh, the GFS six head is quite a lot more unsettled. Um, well, it's unsettled through the last week of March, but the difference is that it's rather colder as well, I think, um, especially later on. That gets us to the 30th of March. If you're enjoying the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Thanks to everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc, etc, etc. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Weather and get them to subscribe too. And we thank you so much everyone uh, for doing that. We need to put on around 18, 1, 8 subscribers to get ourselves to 19.6k. Uh, so if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much everyone. Right, GM again starts off at high pressure 
on Sunday. Oh, hang on. No, this hasn't updated. No, this is, uh, this is yesterday's gem. Okay, well, we can recover this. I can pull this one uh, out of the bag. I think you go to the cellar. Um, okay, so this is the GM. Good recovery, Gab. Good recovery. <laughs> Uh, that's a classic gap moment, isn't it? Uh, I always get to check check the date stamps, you know, when I'm doing these videos. Anyway, good recovery from gap. This is be uh, this is uh, this morning's GM, fourteenth of March. Right, okay. That is right, isn't it? That's okay, yeah, let's do this then. So start off again with GM under high pressure uh, through the start of next week. High pressure slips away. And then uh, by a, by the end of next week, we bring low pressure in from off the ice. So looking a lot more unsettled at the end of next week and into uh, the next weekend. Heading up towards day 10 with the jam, where we look really unsettled. Actually, we're under a 990 millibar area of low pressure and uh, looking very, very mixed there, I have to say. So uh, there is a switch from high pressure to low pressure there with the GM by the end of next week. And then the ECM uh, rounds it all off the chart. Days with high pressure again in control on Monday. High pressure slips away to Eastern Europe very gradually through the course of next week. That's right, you know where near as unsettled with the uh, ECM compared to, for example, the GEM. Um, with uh, winds in from the south, so it is turning much milder next week, but a strong influence still from that high pressure over on the eastern side of Europe. However, just after that, the ECM does turn unsettled around days 9 and 10 with low pressure heading in from off the Atlantic. Notice the ECM is also starting to build up some higher pressure towards Greenland as well. Uh, then we go into very unsettled, extended with the ECM. Deep low pressure right over top of the country uh, being kind of locked in by uh, Northern Blocking. That's an interesting chart. That's the 27th of March. So we've got this high pressure around Greenland that's trying to bring down cold air from the north. But at the same time, we've got high pressure over France that's trying to keep uh, mild air going from south. In between, there will be active uh, weather system going all the way through there, bringing a lot of heavy rain, potentially. And also on the northern edge, there will be the risk of some uh, snow with that, would you believe? So, um, proper old battle taking place there with the ECM and the extended. No real resolution to that up to the end of it. Gets us to the 29th of March. So, again, strong blocking around Greenland. No pressure to our southwest. Again, there's weather fronts that's uh, kind of strung out through there and at milder air still trying to be maintained to uh, the south. There's a bit of a hint of the spring of 1998 about that, but I shall say no more, and we'll see <laughs> see how that develops. Right, precipitation forecast based on the East End run from Treasure. Well, there's going to be a lot of dry weather up to day 10, so we'll get through this quite quickly. Just right at the very end, starts to have more showering about low pressure around day 9 and 10 to the southwest. These are the on the table within the ECM ensemble today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 24th of March. 14 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to our south and southwest. High pressure is uh, ridging through the Atlantic and also going northwards as well. Winds are coming up from the south, so that looks uh, very unsettled, potentially. Should be quite mild, but, uh, of course, the heights, as I say, are building to the north. Got 13, again, with high pressure to the north and to the north east, low pressure southwest. So, so again, we're drawing up a, a southerly wind uh, with that and turning more unsettled. The high pressure to the north, though, would be trying to bring down some uh, colder air from the north. And then we've got 13 with high pressure sort of ridging through the country, low pressure uh, further away to the southwest. That's a drier and pretty mild option winds coming up from the south. We've got seven with high pressure just to the west of the country. And then we've got four with a deep trough of low right out of the country. Quite a few options, but I think most of them are hinting to get something a bit more unsettled around day 10. And then in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It gets us to the 29th of March. 17 members of the ECM ensembles with a mid-Atlantic bridge going to Greenland. 
a trough of low pressure to the south. So, drawing up a southerly wind to the south and pulling in a uh, cold wind to the north. And uh, there's weather fronts that mark the boundary and the divide with that 14 with a deep trough of low. I mean, it is a deep trough of low right top of the country. Mid Atlantic Ridge heading towards Greenland. That could bring in some colder air into that low pressure. We've got 12 with low pressure to the south, high pressure. Is ridging through the Atlantic, going up towards Northern Europe. Winds again coming in from the northeast. And then we've got eight with high pressure in the Atlantic, going up towards Green Iceland. And around that, we bring the wind in from an easterly uh, direction. That's the most settled option. But most of the options look unsettled there at uh, two weeks out. And um, it could be hinting at something a bit colder trying to get going as well, courtesy of that blocking signal. And that could, again, be down to uh, the troposphere response to the strap warm. Sudden stratospheric warming event is possible. And so could this. This is uh, April 700 millibar height anomaly from a CFS. Uh, today, remember, these charts do change daily. This is a big change, what the CFS has been showing uh, recently, but looks like it's a, uh, it's a classic sort of troposphere response to a sudden stratospheric warming with a lot of normal blocking up towards Greenland and extending into the North Pole as well. Low pressure down towards Spain and winds are coming in from an east or northeasterly uh, direction. So that potentially hints at a colder month in April, although there's no signal for the temperature anomaly and uh, there's no signal for precipitation either. It just depends how close this uh, trough that the model actually has over Spain uh, is to us. Uh, that could turn into a very cold, and well, a very wet and cold month, or it could turn into a chilly and uh, a, a relatively dry month. Again, it depends on that trough of low pressure and how far north it is. But it's a big change, what CFS has been forecasting uh, for April, and I suspect that, again, is the CFS picking up on a troposphere response to the sudden stratospheric warming event that has been and is still uh, occurring and ongoing. The CFS doesn't look at the strap level and boundary, uh, you know, so until those events have actually happened, to have actually had the warming in the stratosphere, the CFS won't see it. It's only after the event has happened that it begins to pick up on, you know, uh, the impacts in the troposphere. Anyway, it's uh, just, uh, you know, today's forecast, it might, look it, might look it might look different yesterday. We shall see. Right, well, anyway, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for showing for DM out. Drop a comment. Let us know what I think about this, all of our videos, content, etc. And uh, don't forget to hit friends about Gazworth. Get to subscribe to you. Thanks for showing for DM out. And if you can afford to give a little donation, Gazworth is via our PayPal page. And please uh, consider doing that for us. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, so we can. We've got the um, 6 a.m. forecast. Come tomorrow, weekend forecast, each of them do a 42 day up and a 10 to 14 day as well. On Sunday, again, all kicks off 6 a.m. forecast. We will have the second update for uh, summer 2025. And then we'll be live at 6 p.m. on Sunday evening with your 10 to 14 day. And I'm sure we'll include some uh, long range in that as well. Uh, well, you enjoy the rest of your Friday. And for this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.